paraphrase everybody's favorite poet, the asshole now is later to win. That is from the most underrated show out right now. It's called Super Pumped, where Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays Travis Kalanick, the founder of Uber. And I know, it was a spot-on impression, but that was actually me with the voiceover. I had my live stream cut off due to copyright infringement. I will never understand the dynamics of React videos. And on that note, I don't typically make videos like this, but as an internationally known and locally disrespected Uber driver, I thought it would be rude not to throw my two cents in about this show. Long story short, highly recommend. It is more than just a show about the creation of rideshare. It is how the world works. They should have gotten Bo Burnham for the show's theme song. That is how the world works. Sorry for singing, still dodging those copyright strikes. I feel what's unique about this show is that it does a really good job of making a point, presenting both sides of that argument, and then leaving the viewer to decide what they think is right. Is this legal? <laughs> Though I will say, I do think the creators left a little breadcrumb as to what they think. And I'll share that at the end of the video so as not to give any spoilers. But that debate that the show's having within itself is what makes it bigger than just a show about rideshare. And that debate is, what is more important, being good or being beneficial. So Super Pump kind of flew under the radar. My theory is because it was released on Showtime and who the hell has Showtime? But it was just recently added to Netflix. The show does a really good job of replicating real life events and just about every character in the show is real. None of those composites. I hate when movies and shows do that. When I found out that Erica Albright, who was made out to be the entire driving force behind Facebook and the social network, when I found out she never existed, I was pissed. If I ever get to meet the right writer of that movie, I'm gonna tell him, I'm a fan of your work, but you're an asshole. I digress. The point is, obviously Super Pumped is dramatized, but it sticks to the general facts pretty well. Personally, I love shows and movies about how companies were built, but even more than that, I think Super Pumped does a really interesting job of showing how the powers that be, whether it's big business or politics or venture capitalists, people who have the kind of money and power to dictate things like how we shop or how we communicate or how we travel. It does a really interesting job of showing how they operate. It was lovely to chat with you. I'm confident we will find the solution. No, man. It's always my pleasure speaking with you on the phone. Now we all know how it ended with Uber, it became the behemoth that it did, and I'm sure most of you by now know that it's a sleazy company that did everything it took, legal or not, to get there. You crack a guy's cranium open? You know, you make an example of somebody, people start to fall in line. But the reason I think this show's so different than other shows like it is it's not just about demonizing Uber or Silicon Valley or capitalism. This show asks a question that can be applied to everything and everyone, and that question is, at what point does morality become more important than the benefit, whether that benefit be profit or convenience or, or winning. And you might be thinking, as an Uber driver myself, I like this show because it highlights the plight of the lowly Uber driver. And the truth is, that was nowhere near a focus of the show. They did personify the Uber driver that Travis Kalanick was caught on camera berating in real life. You keep changing every day. What you I, keep, you what, keep changing hold on a second. Day. What have I changed about black? Huh? What am I changing? the whole business. What? What? You know what? What? Some people don't like to take responsibility for I their shit. Responsibility. They blame everything but in their life on somebody else. email for town card? Good luck. And what I didn't realize about Uber was that it actually started as a luxury service. The whole idea of Uber X, which is the Uber that I drive and the Uber that 99% of people take, that only came about later as a way to answer their money problem. We, we started. I am. We didn't go low end because we wanted to. We went low end because we had to because we'd be out of So drivers like Kamal, which I think is his name, when he signed up, he didn't think he would have to be competing against the lower price Uber X. But as we all know now, nobody really seemed to care about the luxury of these Uber ve vehicles, and it was the convenience that won out. Now, I'm not bringing that up, and the show doesn't bring it up just to bash the business model of Uber. The reason I mention that is that it plays into a theme that serves the overarching question of good versus beneficial. And that theme is perception versus reality. After all, what is good and what is beneficial have to do with one's perception of it, right? They do do this really cool thing where they show a green screen behind Travis Kalanick, basically showing the perception he is trying to create or believe. Oh, look at that. Our main motherfucker would love to find a lie that he could float. 
and then showing how that lines up with reality. And it's fitting because all of Uber was built on lies. They lied to investors, they lied to Google, they lied to Apple, they of course lied to drivers and city and state governments. I'm here today because of China. But despite all that, it still became an international billion dollar company. And even more importantly, people still love it. At least admit this, you love riding in my cars. You love all the stuff this comes since as a direct result of my innovations. It flips the script on everyone, not just the founders of Uber or the VCs that invested, but the government officials, the employees of Uber, the drivers of Uber, even anyone who's ever taken an Uber. So be virtuous, be better than me and write me off, but just remember how secretly grateful you are. There's this whole little segment about the hashtag delete Uber, which I had no idea it got that big and it was really interesting. If you're familiar with my channel, you probably know that before watching this series, I thought Uber was a sleazy company that is not to be trusted. After watching this series, I still think the same. If you're going to drive for Uber, remember, you are in it for yourself. But as crazy as it sounds, after watching this show, it almost made me respect and like Uber a little more. It kind of made me realize that Uber never had any intention of being good. It's just my fault for assuming so. And I think that's a major argument that this show is making, that we want to believe that the powers that be are well-intentioned. And who knows, maybe the overall benefit they provide is good. But the means to get there can be pretty freaking ugly. As far as what the creators of the show believe, the point that they're trying to make, in my opinion, goes like this. At the start of this video, the clip I shared, Paraphrase everybody's favorite poet, the asshole now is later to win. There's no mistaking, be it in the show or in real life, that Travis Kalanick is an asshole. But the so-called paraphrasing isn't paraphrasing at all, but changing the original quote entirely. Everyone's favorite poet that's being referenced is Bob Dylan, which, to say he's everyone's favorite, is debatable. But what is not debatable is the original quote, which says, the loser today is later to win. Now, in context of the Bob Dylan song, I don't think loser and a-hole are interchangeable. What the creators of the show are saying is that if you are an a-hole, you're a loser. But losers can still win if the standard is money and power. And what I think is even more interesting is... It doesn't give this kumbaya, money is the root of all evil kind of conclusion. Well, the show does a good job of showing how people do rely on Travis Kalanick or these venture capitalists for money. Even how the employees of Uber rely on Uber being bad in order to do the work that they want to do. So at the end of the day, the reality of whether you're a loser or a winner has to do with how you perceive what winning and losing is. Is it being nice? Is it making a lot of money? Is it being liked? Is it being useful? Is it a mix of all those things? And that's up to each individual to decide for themselves. And that's why I thought this show did a really cool job of presenting this idea. Long story long, I highly recommend this show. If you have watched it, let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Sorry for the delay in getting this out. I don't know if you could tell, but uh, your boy lost his voice over here.